those people, those devotees who worship me in all ways, the Lord says, Krishna says in the Gita, Tesham Nityabhi Yuktanam, those who are constantly engaged in the thought, in the prayer, in love of God, Yoga Kshema Vaham Myaham, I take care of them. Very important point. Krishna says in the Gita, I take care of them. Because the question will arise, so if I keep, keep uh, thinking about God, what's going to happen to my life? Who's going to take care of my um, uh, financial responsibilities, my family responsibilities, my job, my health, all of that? And Sri Krishna says, God will take responsibility. If you throw all your responsibility upon God, then God takes responsibility for you. Yoga Kshema here means whatever you need in life, what you need, not, not greed, but what is needed, that will be supplied by God. And whatever you have in life, who's going to take care of all of this? People in my life, my house, my car, and my dog, who's going to take care? And God says, I will take care of you. I'll take care of you. What you have, I will protect. Kshema. What you do not have, what you require, I shall add unto you. In the Bible also the same thing. It shall be added unto you, whatever you need. Seek first the Lord and whatever you need on this earth will be added unto you. And, the, and Krishna, look at the word Krishna uses there. Vahamyaham. I shall bear, I shall carry it on my shoulders and take to the devotee. Not that I shall grant. Vahami in, in Sanskrit means I shall carry unto the devotee. I shall protect the devotee. I shall carry it to the devotee. There is a beautiful story about Tulsi Das who wrote the Ramcharit Manasena, Tulsi Das. He was staying in Kashi, in Banaras at that time. And some rich people had come and given some stuff to him, some, some gifts to the, to the saint. And the thieves had noticed it, the robbers. Oh, the saint has got nice stuff in his, in his hut. So they wanted to rob him at night. They were keeping a watch. Late in the night, when they were sure that the saint had gone to sleep, Tulsidas had gone to sleep, they, they began to sneak up to the hut where he lived. They saw two young boys standing with bow and arrow there. Yeah. They were standing. One was a little dark, one was fair. They were standing there and patrolling all around the hut. They withdrew. The thieves withdrew. And then again they came back a little later. Again the same two very strange, uh, these two wonderful young, young men standing there with a bow and an arrow. And then they, in fear they withdrew again. Throughout the night they tried to come close. But then they couldn't. I mean, anybody who knows Tulsi Das and Rama, and you would know that is Rama and Lakshmana. That is the story. It's a well-known story. Rama and Lakshmana were patrolling <laughs> the uh, house for. <laughs> Next morning, because they had the vision of Rama and Lakshmana, the thieves were transformed. They went to the feet. Uh, they went to the saint and fell at his feet and said, "Lord, for, uh, uh, Swami, forgive us. We wanted to rob you, but we could not." But tell us, who were these strange people you have employed, your bodyguards, yeah? <laughs> who were there, and they looked like this, and they had a bow and arrow, and immediately Tulsidas had tears in his eyes. But look at his reaction. Oh, because I have accumulated these goods in my house, and it's attracting robbers, and the Lord is troubled. The Lord has to come the, and, and protect me all night long because I am accumulating all this. Immediately he called the poor people of the neighborhood and donated whatever he had in his, uh, in his little hut. Because the Lord should not be troubled. The Lord himself does that. Another beautiful story. Um, Jagannath Mishra. He was a great uh, Pandit and a great uh, Vaishnava in Puri. He wrote a commentary. And not only the Gita, I think most of the Mahabharata probably in Sanskrit. He and his wife used to live there and he would be a scholar. He would write a commentary on, uh, on the scriptures in Sanskrit. So when he came to this verse where Krishna says, Yoga Kshema Vahamyaham I carry whatever is necessary and I protect whatever is to be protected in, 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 for the devotee. Now the Jagannath Mishra thought Vaham is too much. I carry is too much. Why should the Lord carry something for the devotee? This is not proper. So he said it must be a mistake and he cut it out with a pen, with, with a, the, the, one of those quills they had and he wrote, Dadamyaham, I give, I grant. The Lord says, I grant what is necessary for the de devotee, not I carry. So he cut it out. Now that day there was no food in their house and his wife was worried. Um, 
and she saw, and there was nothing to cook, but she saw this uh, very nice looking young kid coming with a bundle on his head. And when he came and he said, your husband, the pundit, he has sent all this. This is all, he opened the bundle and he saw, she saw all the materials for food. And everything was there, and they would have a sumptuous meal. But she saw, to her horror, a red cut on the boy's face. And she was saying, who did this to you? This is horrible. Who hurt you? And the boy shrugged. Your husband did. He cut me across the face. And then he, uh, he walked away. And she was, she was so heartbroken at this. When her husband returned, and she said, What's happened to you in your old age? You lost your wits or what? That young boy so nice, you sent all the food with him, but why did you hit him? Uh, what possessed you to, to hit the little boy and, and he's, he's hurt, he was bleeding. And then Jagannath Mishra immediately understood. He immediately rushed to the, his Gita and he opened the page where he had cut it out. Vaham yaham, I bear. He cut it out, he again erased that and he put it back as it was. Not that I grant, I bear. It's literally true, my Lord. You bear for your devotees. So, the Lord will take care of life. When Narendra Nath, he was in, in very bad condition. His father had died, he didn't have a job, and his family was in debt, and he had younger brothers and sisters to take care of. He was desperate. So he went to Sri Ramakrishna. And he said, you pray to your mother, Mother Kali, so that they can, so at least my family will get something to eat. How can I become a monk or seek for God when my family is starving? And Sri Ramakrishna said, why don't you pray to the mother? I don't pray for such things. So Narendra said, look, you believe in her and you, you see her and you talk to her, so pray to her. I really, it's not really my thing. You know, a staunch non-dualist. Sri so Ramakrishna said, no, you have to do it. I don't pray for such things. So uh, Narendra Nath went and late in the night, and then he came back drunk, in, as if in ecstasy of, uh, of love. And Ramakrishna asked him, what happened? When I went there to pray, I had a vision of the Divine Mother. She was there, she's real, she's alive, she's there. Oh, did you ask? Yes, I asked for devotion, for love, for jnana, for knowledge, for dispassion, for detachment from the world so that I can have one-pointed devotion to, to God. Ramakrishna said, yeah, yeah, that's all right, but did you ask for money and for food for your family? Narendra said, no, how could I? I forgot everything when I saw the mother. Ramakrishna said, you are more impractical than me. Go back there and ask. So he sent Narendra Nath back again. The second time, the same thing happened. He said, I, I saw the mother again, but I asked for love and devotion and, and uh, spiritual knowledge and dispassion, vairagya. Only for spirituality, nothing worldly. Sri Ramakrishna sent him back a third time. It means there's still time. Go back, you young fool. Go and ask. You need money. You need uh, food for you. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Third time also Narendra came back. I could not ask for that. I can't ask for such things from, from God. You see, he is a devotee of this higher category we are talking about. Who wants nothing from God, even though he needs it. When he goes in front of God, when he goes in front of the Lord, he is not, I am Narendra Nath, my mother and my, my younger brother and sister are starving, we are in debt, I don't have a job, please help me. No. No, no. All of that disappears. No matter how much the problems in life, nothing of that in his mind. I love God, I am thine, thou art mine. That's all that he, he can pray for. Third time also he could not do that. Then Sri Ramakrishna, you see, Yoga Kshema Vahamyam, Sri Ramakrishna said, all right, he was very happy secretly. That's what he wanted from Narendra Nath. He said, all right, your family will never lack plain food and clothes. He never said that they're going to become millionaires. They'll just get, just, they'll just get by. I, I, I assure you that much. And that they did, definitely. So the Lord takes care of his own. This one-pointedness comes in life. Ananyata, there's a beautiful word. Ananyata. One-pointedness comes in life when you lead life like this. One of the factors that we have to take care of is, in Sanskrit they say, Anya Ashrayanam Tyagaha. Give up all other support in life. We have many supports in life. What makes us feel good? I am rich. That's my support in life. I have millions. 
That's one support. The attitude is, no, not wealth. My support is the Lord. Wealth is there today, gone tomorrow. I am young and beautiful and strong. That's there today and gone tomorrow. That's true. I, I saw the picture of Muhammad Ali, you know. And towards the end, how uh, he, he's, he became the, the Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, I think. So this one of the strongest, most fierce fighters in the world, trembling, hardly able to control his own body. It goes away. Everything in life goes away. The, uh, all physical strength and health and beauty and youth, everything fades away. I was just saying, I think yesterday, even if you practice a lot of yoga and eat gluten-free all your life, <laughs> still, the most gluten-free yogi is also going to get old and, uh, and, and die. So, all of that goes away. Our depend, we depend on the Lord alone and nothing else. Ashraya, my refuge is the Lord. Not anything else. Power. Most powerful man in the world or in, in the company or some... That also, that should not be my refuge. That I depend on that. God plus my wealth or my power. No, God alone. Give up all other supports. Doesn't, doesn't mean that you're going to give up your bank balance and resign from your position of power. All that may be there outside. But internally know that I depend on only the Lord.